Hi, and welcome to this webinar. Uh, today uh, I'm going to, to discuss um, a GDPR compliance uh, with uh, Neil Stobart and Cameron Youssef. Uh, Neil works for Cloudium, uh, Cameron works for SME, which stands for Storage Made Easy. We're going to discuss how to get your uh, storage GDPR compliance. Um, SME and Cloudium together have a solution for that. Uh, and in addition, uh, that solution also offers many more things other than uh, GDPR compliance. So Neil, what about Cloudian? What, what, what do you do? What, what kind of company are you? So, so Cloudian uh, primarily focus um, delivering an object storage platform. So object storage is a different way of managing data from your traditional storage platforms such as you know, block or file. It's addressed very much around dealing with the unstructured data rather than traditionally people think of dealing with structured data which is data held in databases. Uh, or you know some some way of, of um, annotating that data. We're trying to put structure around the unstructured data, and one of the challenges around the unstructured data is it's just growing at an enormous pace. Um, and you look at you know everybody who works in the storage industry, you know they keep revising their their ideas. I mean it was exabytes scale, you know now it's zettabytes, you know yottabytes I think is the next one, mm -hmm. and and it really is growing exponentially. So. Organizations need a platform that can that can scale and grow like that, and, and obviously, object storage is is the way to do that. So we've um, you know we've been around since 2011. Um, we've been selling products since about two, 2014/15. So really, been out in the market for you know just over three years, and really you know had had great success, and and you know really working with a lot of big organizations, you know well-known organizations. So um, you know certainly. You know, people are beginning to see the value of object yes. storage. Yeah. Cameron, how about SME? Storage made easy. We provide a solution called Enterprise File Fabric that connects multiple different storages and provides a single pane of glass to access, uh, to manage, and to collaborate internally and externally with the uh, object storages and also with the legacy uh, file systems. And uh, as Neil mentioned that object storage, it is a scalable solution, but it provides an API. We sit on top of uh, object storage Cloudian and provide uh, unified access mm -hmm. to the data mm -hmm. and a collaboration solution on that. Okay, so uh, the, the first question obviously is, um, why are you working together on, on, this, on this thing called GDPR and more, uh, which we talk about later? But wh why Cloudian and Storage Made Easy? Why is this such a good combination? Yeah? So, like, like I said, you know, the, the, the unstructured data is growing exponentially um, and people need a solution for that. Um, we're really, Cloudian really provides that base layer you know, storage platform, uh, if, that, if that makes sense. Mm -hmm. You know, there's, people could go with block storage, they could go with file storage, they could go with cloud storage. Um, but really, what we're seeing in the market, you know, they obviously need to deal with all of this data and, and the more data you have to store, the more storage you need, the more expensive it gets. And storage is actually one of the um, biggest expenditures in, in the data center. You know, you spend more on storage than you do on networking and, and server platforms. So being able to control that cost whilst being able to scale is, is, is really important. It's not just about the scale though, it's, it's also about access. So, you know, we leveraged the S3 API that was pioneered by um, Amazon Web Services. Um, it's grown in, in popularity and now, you know, every sort of ISV um, solution is, is building support for S3. So now you have block file and S3, not object, it's yeah. actually yeah. S3. Um, so we, we bring a lot of functionality around that. And clearly, you know, GDPR is a, is a, is a major concern, not just for European organisations, but for any organisation, you know, globally, mm -hmm. that has to store data, you know, for European citizens, you know, that, that, that private um, data. So, you know, we kind of provide that, that base level that, that allows you to build um, your workloads on top of that. Mm -hmm. And you know, the Storage Made Easy platform is one of those workloads that can sit on top of us. And that then, you know, 
hand over to you in a moment, but you know that, that very specifically addresses how an organization can manage their user data and, and, and specifically this this you know understanding where it's coming from, how it needs to be managed, all the policies and the like. And, and the workload storage made easy offers. Uh, that is something that you can't do or won't do yourself, or is it something that's too alien to what you do otherwise? Um, well, we actually kind of provide a portal to get to allow an end user get a, to get access to mm -hmm. the data once it's on the on the on the platform on the clouding platform. Um, but it's, it's relatively rudimentary. That's not what our core IP is all about. You know, we're, we're about building this big multi data center, um, you know, storage platform. You know, managing users, managing how users use their data. That's something that you know, Storage Made Easy has developed. You know, as 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 their core IP, and you know, it's 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 much more focused. It's much more tightly focused. Yeah. And I, I think we, you know, potentially yes. We, you know, we, I guess we could go and get a bunch of engineers and they could develop something like that. But it's 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 going to take away, you know, where we want to go in the market. So we actually look to partner with. Yeah. People like Storage Made Easy to you know develop the best of breed um, solutions for, for what the customers actually need. So together you can offer a better solution probably yeah. than you could than you could develop better together. Better yes. together, yeah. right? Yeah. So um, Cameron, from from your perspective, why 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 so, Claudian? Uh, as Neil mentioned, that uh, <coughs> a hyperstore it provides S3 API, mm -hmm. uh, and then. A console where the users they can view the data. We are kind of the last mile for object storage or S3 storage. And now, if a user they have to access the system, you have to integrate with the identity management system. If you want, you want to put permissions on, just like people are used to using NTFS, mm -hmm. read permissions, write permissions. You need audit logs. You need to create shared links. You need to have integration with best of the breed tools that the enterprises use in their organization. You want sync and share also for offline access for the data. So what we do is that, okay, take what Cloudium provide a scalable mm -hmm. storage solution mm -hmm. and make it easier to use for the end users, plus give the C-level guys mechanisms where they have defined mm -hmm. their policies to implement those. Mm -hmm. Everything mm -hmm. is policy driven and provide an easy to use solution that the IT departments, they can manage very, very easily mm -hmm. and scale as hyperstore scales yeah. or the user's new scale. Yeah, so, so probably um, um, not necessarily breaking down, but building on top of the silos that, 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 that occur uh, inside organizations uh, 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 is one of the key. Uh, Key points as well, right? About uh, this, uh, this collaboration. Th th uh, that is correct. Organizations, if they get hyperstore, they are not going to get rid of their existing storage solutions. Mm -hmm. We connect with hyperstore, we connect with existing filers, we connect with other object storages also. Mm -hmm. And you can combine them all together, provide a single view to the end users and also to the administration guys mm -hmm. and also to, uh, for uh, automated workflows. Once you have combined them all uh, together, now if you want to do the migration of the users, that allows organizations to gradually migrate the users. The users will not even know the next yeah. day they come along, they're using the new platform. Yeah. And we provide all the tooling around yeah. it also. So it's fair to say that it's a, it's, it's, it's basically it's a very user-centric approach as well, right? So you're, you're, the user, you're building the solution Specifically for the most ease of use for your for your uh, for your customers. Right. That is correct for most ease of use with the controls that uh, for security yeah. and uh, for GDPR yeah. also. Because that's always a bit of a no. uh, a thing, right? Ease of use versus security uh, versus especially when we're going to be talking about GDPR in a minute. Uh, uh, ease of use every now and again conflicts. The, the, with, the, with that particular uh, uh, that uh, there is always a tension between yeah. security and uh, ease of use and also openness yeah. and what we try to do is that provide a way where the yeah. uh, end users they are happy but the policies yeah. they are also implemented so, so i think the s3 api it, it, it's it's very very powerful it, it it allows workloads users to do a lot more with their data but your regular you know 
IT, your user of IT, they want what they're used to. They want you know something to be familiar and easy to use. So although we go and talk about you know the power of S3, mm -hmm. actually mm -hmm. you know what what people really want is something that it works just the same way as, as it always has done. And that that's the beauty of the storage made easy solution is that that's what they get. They get the benefits of the you know the economics of scale of an object storage platform with all this kind of cool S3 API <coughs> stuff that's going on as well. But the end user doesn't have to yeah. understand any of that. Yeah. They just see the data store presented to them as how it's always been. It looks like an NTFS file share or an NFS mm -hmm. file share, and they can just you know use it like that. But then there's a whole other yeah. bunch of clever stuff going on in the background that you know overall delivers a much much better solution. Yeah, we, we, we're going to talk about the, the the actual solution for the end user in a in a little bit as well. And we're going to dig, yeah. dig some deeper into that as well. Yeah. But for now, let's let's just first. Um, uh, get to grips with GDPR, right? Because it's um, it's in my in my understanding. I've I've, I've been reading the, the document for, uh, for for quite some time, <laughs> and I still haven't finished it. Uh, it's um, it's 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 rather vaguely worded, and I, I don't really understand. I mean, is it possible to have a foolproof solution uh, or a, or a, or a, a complete solution for GDPR if if the the guideline itself is is rather vague? Mm. Because that has implications both for the for, for your side of the story, but also for the judicial side of the story, yeah. right? Yeah. I mean, if nobody really knows what it's, it's a legislation. Yeah. Yes. So yeah. it is a legislation, right? Yeah. Uh, uh, but it's, it's so vaguely worded that maybe both sides of defense think, well, when are we going to charge someone with something? Because, and does he actually know that he's not being compliant to things? Correct. So. In, in Europe, do you have a good idea of what GDPR is? <laughs> I hope, I hope so. Now, <laughs> uh, I mean, I, I've, I've read, I've read through. I mean, I, I can't remember how many pages there are, but I've read through it many, many times, trying to make sure that I don't miss anything. So, you know, I'm, I'm working on a on a paper right now, is to to determine, you know, how the Cloudian technology meets the the needs of of the regulations. And yeah, I mean, some of it is very big. Um, you know, the, the data needs to be, uh, or no, storage systems, you know, needs to to be designed, you know, with um, you know data protection in mind, or you know, as, as yeah. a base principle. Mm -hmm. So what I mean, even just that phrase, data protection, what what does that mean? Is, is that a security? Is it a disaster recovery? Is it you know protecting against soft failures, hard failures? So. As I'm writing this paper, it's getting longer and longer and longer because I'm just worried that I'm going to miss any sort of eventuality. Mm -hmm. So, so where I've, you know, where I'm taking guidance is I'm, I'm, I'm talking to my customers, yeah. um, you know, because it's not just about GDPR. You know, absolutely the number one first thing you should say is it's not just about technology. No. It's about um, an organisation, how they manage data. So. How they manage data obviously has an impact on the technology. You know where you're storing the the, the, the data, how you're accessing it. Absolutely, it's all relevant. Mm -hmm. But without the firm process, business process in place, you know, you could load a file onto our storage platform. You know, we could say, well, we've got all the security, everything's data protected. You know, blah blah blah. It's encrypted. All of that wonderful stuff. But actually, the organisation might be. You know, not compliant because they shouldn't be actually storing that information in the first place. Yeah. So organizations have to go through a whole data cleansing process and actually look at where they're getting data from, um, you know, how they are yeah. storing it, and that's where it sort of starts to match <coughs> up to us. So it's, it's, and that's, that's the thing. So w I get asked, you know, is your platform GDPR compliant? And that's where I, I, I get a little bit nervous because I think it is. Yeah. I think it can meet all of those, you know, statements where the storage must be designed as such I think we can meet all of those things but it can never be compliant because what's the old saying right garbage in garbage out you know you put stuff in that's not compliant then the stuff comes out that's not compliant and and it's not the technology's providers fault it's it's it's, you know, it's the yeah. way that the organization so, be dealing with yeah. the data so what you're saying is there are the various levels of 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 being compliant with, mm -hmm. right? You can, you can, you, you can be compliant with it from a technical standpoint, but then if you're, if 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 the company itself really doesn't really care about 
about which type of data they gather, they're still not compliant, even, gonna, though, yeah. even though your platform actually is. Yeah, uh, yeah. Oh, absolutely. And the, the, I mean, the GDPR documentation does talk about um, certifications, but yeah. there's no certification exists today. So I'm not really sure how they're anticipating these certifications to, to come about, whether, you know, somebody you know, makes the first yeah. step. I mean, you know, I've been talking to customers and they've been taking advice from, you know, the big, you know, business consultant mm -hmm. organizations yeah. and having an audit. And yet, you know, they're working off the same draft as all our, all us technology providers. Yeah. Um, so there's still a lot, it, there's still a, a big yeah. gray area. I think. So to a certain extent, it's still a work in progress, right? The, 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 the guideline itself, but it, it, do, it, do you also account for that in your solution, right? Is it, okay, is, so is, is that also so something that you take as well? If 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 we have if there are if there are going to be some certification, we can we can easily integrate being uh, compliant with uh, those certifications uh, uh, in our solution. Uh, correct, but right now there is no GDPR uh, certification, no, no, no. and it just came around that okay, give the users personal uh, control over their uh, data, mm -hmm. and. As Neil mentioned that, okay, the companies, they will need to go to a legal firm. First of all, they need to know what data do they have, mm -hmm. where do they mm -hmm. store it, mm -hmm. how do they access it. They need to do an audit for themselves. Then they have, or they have to set the policies and go through the document, what kind of data do they have, and set internal policies for that. And then, <clears throat> after that, it is that, okay, how do we implement it? That also includes technology but it also includes people training, mm -hmm. that they are aware mm -hmm. uh, of that. And where our solution comes along is that on the implementation phase, mm -hmm. in section five, there are about six things uh, in the GDPR mm -hmm. that you have to do, yeah. okay, the data must be secure. Yeah. You should, you, if you are processing the data, it should be for yeah. a specific business purpose. Yeah. Uh, you need to know yeah. that who has accessed the data. So those are the practical steps that come out of uh, the, uh, the GDPR uh, document. Yeah. And that's what this, this solution provides. I've heard uh, some people actually say that Section 5 is the only section that you actually need to read. Uh, read, but, yeah. And, and it, it's, probably, just, it's, just six, a, it's just six uh, <laughs> bullet points. Correct. Of things, but I mean, uh, and, and things is, do get repeated through, yes, through yeah, the, yeah. the document. Yeah. Um, I mean, and that was the, the first task I, because that was what I'd heard. Section five is the only, you know, yeah. but, but actually if you delve and start to pick certain sentences apart, you know, it, there is more than, yeah, more sure. than just section Otherwise five, yeah. Yeah. Section five. Section five, yeah. And yeah. there is a lot of interpretation <laughs> around it. Uh, like people said that, okay, well, one of the things, well, uh, one of the trick questions for the GDPR still is, that, okay, what about the backups? Mm -hmm. Like you need to keep the data for a certain period mm -hmm. of time mm -hmm. or as long as you need it, but now you are keeping the backups for a long, long period of time. Mm -hmm. What about the data and the backups? Yeah, you would clear what? that out as well. <laughs> Do you want to clear that out as well also? Mm -hmm. So uh, it is vague, um, a, a lot of things there, but it does give you some guidelines and that's what we have taken uh, to implement. This and and I think, you know, we're kind of going, we're probably trying to do too much. We're you know, to make sure that the, the, the organizations, we, we can provide a solution that organizations can use and, and, you know, as it does sort of get shaped over time, we're kind of over delivering just, just to make sure. But the, the challenge is, you know, the, the organizations need to recognize that not all data is created equal. You know, it's kind of a, kind of a cliche, but, yeah. you know, where you've got personal data, you probably, you know, the regulations are kind of saying that everything needs to be encrypted. Um, was it pseudo nominization? I think is the, the word that they actually use. So they're not just saying it's just encryption, but encryption is a way of, of doing that. And I think probably yeah. the most popular way of... But it is the hardest way of doing things. Right? Well, and this, and this is the challenge, is that as soon as you encrypt any data, no matter where in the, the stack, it will impose, you know, performance penalties and you've got to think of what it's actually protecting you against you know where could a sort of a threat you know into the a hacking threat come into the system because if you get hacking into a server that server has probably got the encryption key to access the data anyway so it, it, it then makes no difference really you know what I'm 
often trying to say is let's look at the data sets that you have, look at the different applications, how that they're bringing in data. You know, what is this data? Is, is it just some pictures, some random pictures that we have of, you know, the countryside, or is it pictures of, of people? And we're doing some recognition software to identify those people. They're two completely different use cases. So don't encrypt the data. Mm -hmm. that doesn't need to be encrypting, otherwise you know, you're just putting this severe overhead across your whole infrastructure. So I think you've got to be careful uh, um, that you do actually spend the time to identify that data that is relevant and appropriate to GDPR rather than doing just a blanket approach yeah. just in case. And, and Because a lot of people will do that because that's the easiest way to do it. And also to be on the safe side, they do do that and I think all they say is that, okay, do you have adequate, in GDPR, adequate protection? It is complex. What you find is that when GDPR came around, a lot of companies, they used enterprise file fabric mm -hmm. to do the audit also, mm -hmm. because we can connect and we can also find out different patterns. And they were finding credit cards on directories that were credit card numbers that were yeah. available publicly across, uh, not publicly, <laughs> but across the whole organization. Yeah. Email. If you are sending an email or you have some customer details into that, you need to be oh, aware of that. I mean, email's a nightmare. Nightmare. Yeah. Uh, so, uh, or sharing documents uh, mm -hmm. using uh, emails. So, it is that the data, they are siloed. You do have to do an audit. And a lot of companies that did go through that, we ourselves, we had to put processes in. Yeah, we, sure. we went through the legislation we had we got external is advice it, also. Is, are those the, the, the binding rules you're talking about or not? The, the, the corporate binding rules that, that people talk about when it comes to GDPR for your own company, that you're actually, you actually really revamp the, 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 the structure, if you will, of your company itself to be, to be, to be, to be compliant with uh, GDPR. Is that, is, is that what you mean or is it? No, 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 no. You have to have a solution that is easy to put in. Yes, mm -hmm. the GDPR costs. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you have to do all the order. Mm -hmm. But revamping the company or revamping the whole infrastructure, I think that is a bit uh, too much. Is it too much? Okay. Yeah, uh, well, uh, yeah. but, you, but, but maybe not the necessarily the infrastructure, but maybe maybe the the realization within companies yes. what you do with data. Uh, the awareness. The awareness right? Yes. Well, you know, I mean, you know, so so we're a US firm. We we um, we have European clients. So you know, we are storing in our own CRM, you know, customer uh, records um, system, you know, we're, we're storing e email addresses and, and phone numbers of, of European citizens. So, you know, we're a, a data, data controller and data processor. Yeah. Now, you know, this is where it gets, again, gets a little bit grey is, you know, that data, you know, you know, we've got a good reason to be holding that data and, and actually, you know, our customers would expect us that we're holding that data because let's say there's a support issue, you know, we need to be able to reach out to those guys and inform them. So there's, there's this sort of fine line between personal, because that's, that's yeah. the key word, isn't yeah. it? Personal data. But what is personal? So let's say we've got a mobile phone number of one of our clients that might be his personal number and he's given it to us willingly because he wants to be called when there's a support issue, but that is mm -hmm. personal data. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. you know, it, it's, 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 it's kind of relevant yeah. uh, business data, but it's also personal data. So this is where it gets really difficult. So we did, I mean, we, we ran an audit internally. You know, we, we had to look at where we're getting our data because, you know, as, as marketing teams, you know, they'll go and buy, you know, marketing lists that have got lists of, you know, people, where did we get that information from? Where did that supplier of that data get that information from? And every company is doing that, you know, chain, almost a chain of custody is, you know, where has that information come from? Because if you've, I mean, you might have to ditch that, some of that stuff, you know, and a lot of companies are having to delete whole data sets because actually they've got it from, let's say, not, uh, not reputable sources, sounds a little bit, um, Word. The user didn't give the consent. Yeah, uh, yeah. So it's, there. A bit, it's, it's, it's a bit like non, yes. non, non, non admissible evidence. Uh, evidence, in court, yes. Right? If you, and if, uh, you, if, you, if you gather it yeah. via the wrong, you get it from uh, yeah, what, what the wrong means. Yeah. In, in our exercise, like in our CRM, we had yeah. to mark, like, all right, change all the forms. That okay, can we contact? You have to give the consent. Uh, you don't have to, but we ask for the consent now. And if someone doesn't, yeah. we mark them. 
uh, in uh, our CRM uh, for that. Uh, but th that is the easier bit. It is when if you have a running business and you have lots of different other documents also and CRM probably you, we still can call it structured because you have the fields yes. there and all yeah. that. When it comes to the unstructured data, the documents, Excel spreadsheets, PDFs, images. That's uh, yeah. yeah. That's where. Uh, that's where it becomes really yeah. difficult. Difficult. Yeah. Okay. Well, I think I think uh, we've kind of. I mean, I don't think we've solved uh, what GDPR <laughs> is, but we 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 laid a good from the foundation yeah. about what what we think it is. Yeah. Let's 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 dive into the the solution itself for for, for a minute. Um, as you know, uh, GDPR consists of various uh, parts, right? Mm -hmm. You have your privacy, security, adequacy. Mm -hmm. Does the solution account for, 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 for the, entire, the entire thing or, or are we talking about parts of the solution? So, or, yeah. the way uh, the uh, Enterprise File Fabric, it provides you with a mechanism. So, as I said, that there are the practical steps now that you have to take. Yeah, sure. Uh, and oh, the first thing is that discover uh, what sensitive data <coughs> is. So the solution, it provides a mechanism where you can put different rules in. It comes with built-in rules also, mm -hmm. where you can discover that, okay, does the document contain email addresses? Does it contain credit cards? Does it contain IP addresses? Does it contain social security numbers? Or you can define those yourself. Now we are talking to all the different storages and we are doing it in real time. So one thing is that, okay, you have done the audit, now you have to implement it in real time. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So you have discovered that. The second one is that, okay, who has access to the data? Now you don't want to, as you alluded before, that do we need to change everything for that? No. Mm -hmm. So for identity management organizations, they already have Active Directory, LDAP, they're using uh, uh, Google apps mm -hmm. uh, for their identity management, integrate with that. Now, to the data, now you want to provide access controls also. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So now you have a single place where you're accessing all the different data. It's integrated with your identity management. You can do the discovery also there in real time. Mm -hmm. And you can set up different permissions also. Now, the other side is that you also, you can be audited. You can be checked that, okay, who has access to data, not only now, but in the past. Mm -hmm. So you need to also provide audit controls or audit logs whenever someone accesses yeah. the data, uh, it is stored somewhere, yeah. and you can generate uh, uh, reports yeah. from that. Mm -hmm. uh, then if you are doing collaboration internally or externally, you also want controls mm -hmm. on that. Like Neil mentioned that, okay, email, that's a nightmare. For the GDPR, no one should be attaching attachments to the email. No. You need a solution that where you can put, <clears throat> rather than shared links that are controlled, that how many times can someone download it. Uh, you can set up the passwords, what is the expiry date, and also when someone accesses it, yeah. you log <clears throat> that, okay, this user or this IP address, they have accessed that. So where the solution comes in is that once the organization, they have done their due diligence, mm -hmm. uh, they have some concrete policies, there is a policy-driven solution that you can adapt to your policies and implement them in real time. Because mm -hmm. mm -hmm. I think that's one of the one of the challenges is the access to the data. And again, it goes back to the the GDPR. You know, the data that you hold has to be relevant, and people should only access it that has a, a good case. You know, to access it. So they're not saying that you know this data can never be accessed by anybody. Mm -hmm. You well, know, that, that's that's that I mean sense, that's right? kind of crazy, right? But then I think people yeah. kind of. Yeah. start to, to go that way. Um, so there's a reason you're holding data on, on your client, um, but it, it should be restricted to those people. It's their job to deal with okay. you know, th that client or, or that data or do you know, the analytics on, on whatever it is. And, and I think that's certainly something that you know, the, the Storage Made Easy solution provides. And, and specifically, I think, just to nail down the specific use case, it's Storage Made Easy is really dealing with that user-generated data, right? Uh, would that be a fair, fair comment? You know, it's like traditionally in your IT infrastructure when you talk about user home directories or, or corporate 
shares, sure. you know, where you're sharing data, you know, you, mm -hmm. you create a Word document, you want to share it with the rest of your team or, I mean, typically they sit on a standard file server yeah. and let's just say that I think a lot of organisations get rather lax with their access credentials and I mean, the number of times, you know, I know I've done in the past, you know, oh, I wonder what, you know, if I put a search in and yeah. what, what, <laughs> my my neighbour there is earning, yeah. you know, you can, I mean, what you can find is, 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 is quite frightening. Yeah. And I think that's really your focus, isn't it? And so that for us is just a single workload, mm -hmm. okay? And certainly that's what, why we, we work with Storage Made Easy, because I think there's a whole movement from your traditional file server to, to better ways of collaborating and managing data. That's so then, you know, we, we a cloud, you know, is an object storage platform. It, that, there's other good use cases, right? So it's a great use case for, for backup data. Because, you know, when you backup your data, it's basically a copy of all the data in your environment that you continually keep on making copies of. So it usually means there's a lot of storage needed. Yeah. And when you've got a lot of storage needed, then obviously cost becomes very important. Scale out becomes important. And actually having multiple data centers, you know, having disaster recovery, and people have always traditionally used tape storage yeah. because that purely because that was the lowest cost. But you know that's not easy to manage. There's a lot of overhead. So very even hard though to index as well, right? very hard to index and tapes aren't aren't great medium for long term archival. You know, seven years you need to be winding the tape and reading it yeah, back. And yeah. but also, obviously, if you if you need to be able to demonstrate where someone's data is, or or if you have or have not. Uh, any of, of someone's data, yeah. then you need to be able to have Correct. indexed yeah. storage Cor uh, so you correct. can actually find it. Yeah. <laughs> find it right? And uh, that's where it comes that uh, the filers, yes, organizations use them, but now they want a scale more scalable, a cheaper uh, solution that supports uh, workloads, and then uh, storage made easy. Enterprise File Fabric sitting on top of that, uh, supporting home directory. Now, if you, if you look at S3, it's just an API. What the user wants to do is work with the drive. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, well, with the files. Oh, with the files. Because that, that's uh, for, in general, that's always a bit of an issue with with S S3 support. It's it's nice, but you 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 can't access it via. It, it, standard. Uh, you need you need another. Uh, another, you need another something. Tool, yeah, right? you need yes. something to yes. access it, yeah. right? Because in the API yeah. itself. Yeah. You, you mean. And then uh, above, because these are modern solutions, and the organizations they are going through digital transformation. Mm. It started a while back ago. Now it's quite mainstream. They are holding it back. They are moving to the cloud or moving to the uh, object storage now. And with the filers, all you would get was just a drive. If someone is traveling away, they had to VPN in. Mm -hmm. If you want to share a document with an external partner, there was no way. Now, with the modern solutions, and they go to Google or they'll get to Dropbox, they are sharing pictures with their grandparents, the, the kids' pictures, and it makes it so easy. Yeah. But they go to the organization, they just get a drive. Yeah. So they'd, at the back end, you need a solution that's scalable. Yeah. And at the top, at the top, you need a solution that you can access it through the mobile. Yeah. You can access it through the browser. You can also access it as a drive, and it's easier to manage, and it gives you productivity, but yeah. control also. Yeah, but but the, the, to get this straight, the scalability uh, uh, thing is mainly a Cloudian. Uh, uh, a part in this, right? Or do you need to scale we'll your software together. as well? Yeah, together. You, yeah. you do need to, you, both solutions need to be uh, scalable. Mm -hmm. Enterprise File Fabric doesn't do storage. No, it, it, it relies yeah. on uh, like Cloudian. Yes, yeah, I know. it relies on yeah, uh, but, Cloudian for the, for the scalable yeah, but, storage. Yeah, but what I meant was if you have that access and if you've already, if, if you've built that access once, um, how, how many Scale, scale issues are you going to have from the from the from the software side, or what, what, what the, the, the thing that you're that you're uh, you're going this, to get uh, the scale is that if you are a hundred thousand user organization and you have done the home folder replacement for them, mm -hmm. you do need a solution that is scalable that can be deployed across multiple data centers uh, that doesn't add latency that provides adequate performance uh, and as the usage grows. You can just, like Cloudian, just add a node to, uh, yeah. to scale. Mm -hmm. And also with SME, just add a node uh, to scale. Yeah. Uh, 
almost linear uh, scalability and that is important because the legacy systems or the old systems they were much much harder to scale yeah yeah they were scale up rather than yeah. scale up yeah scale up is always also limited to to the yeah to the compute you have at least and yes <laughs> correct yeah. okay so i mean i think you touched on it already a little bit but if you if you if you had to to, to name a couple of standout features of of the solution that you're you're offering Restricting, maybe not not necessarily restricting it to GDPR now, but to 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 other other issues as well. What what, what are the the standout features in your opinion? So, so GDPR, we work with Claudian on the GDPR side to, for home folder replacement and for uh, providing a, a secure solution. But we also work with Claudian in the media space. Mm -hmm. uh, we also have a technology called MStream, and what we find is that again organizations they have their old systems the old workflows they are built on the filers and now they are moving to cloudian for a scalable storage to archive the data as a tier one or a tier two storage they still require to move the data from one storage system to the other storage system but by the user mm -hmm. not by the it in an easy to use way uh, we have a technology which we have worked with the uh, cloudian called mstream Mm -hmm. That allows to move objects from one storage to another storage, file-based systems or uh, other object mm -hmm. storages, in a very, very fast way. And the way it works is that rather than just opening one stream or doing one operation, mm -hmm. uh, the S3 API, it provides, it supports a protocol where you can do with a single object multiple operations mm -hmm. and we support that for uploads downloads and you can get up to 750 megabytes per second wow. where it becomes important especially in media companies where the size of the files like hey we have probably three or four cameras here mm -hmm. they have seven or eight cameras they are using or 20 cameras they are using uhd yeah. each show is going up to yeah. ten, 10 terabytes yeah. and when you have to edit you want to edit that, okay. so that's what we also provide with the. And obviously, it's, it's it's a common it's a common customer for 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 both of you, right? Yes. Because video obviously is unstructured, so mm -hmm. uh, that's a very good uh, very good use case for, uh, for for object storage as well, right? Well, yeah, huge. I mean, you can imagine, you know, it's not just you know you you, you shoot a video, that's not the only digital asset you have, you know you. In, in, in video, you know, video production, you, you might also do a, a completely separate audio track, mm -hmm. but then you might have multiple audio tracks, especially if you, you know, you, you're going to have a listen. It's an advert, and that's going to be syndicated around the world. You know, there could be a hundred different audio tracks on that, and of course, you you do your original video shoot, and then you know, there's edits done, and maybe you know, animation or effects go onto it. So what starts off is just a single, you know, let's say video file starts to get chopped up and played with and added to and, you know, new stuff. So, you know, let's say it was a gigabyte to start with, it ends up, you know, sort of a hundred times larger. And one of the challenges is that often, you know, there's different people and need to work on it, different specializations. So then they need to share that data. So how do you share that data with multiple people? Mm -hmm you know, in different locations, working on the same baseline, um, you know, so th that, that's a big challenge and, and, you know, and like Cam said, you know, the, the large data, you know, the large, large um, data assets, right? I mean, they're, they're not just, gig I mean, they're way beyond gigabytes these days, especially when you're sort of getting into the 4K, 8K um, shoots these days. So being able to move that data, you know, around globally, um, it's difficult, you know. I, I worked with a, um, an advertising agency. It was over over ten years ago now, and they had, I think it was three hundred terabytes, which actually in, in today's world it it's doesn't awesome. doesn't sound that that yeah. a lot. But but still, moving three hundred terabytes, and they they wanted to share it across. Um, it, it was UK, US, and, and I think it was China. So they wanted to share that 300 terabytes or have access from three different locations. So every night they just had a batch script that just said, right, let's sync this 300 terabytes between you know, these two other data centers and sometimes there's stuff coming back over. And honestly, they, they were having a, an absolute now, you know, hor horror show with it. And now it's petabytes. Oh, way beyond petabytes. And uh, it's not just the current one. 
like uh, we have a common customer and it's a show it's going on for about 20 years mm -hmm. someone else comes along to the show like Madonna comes to the show mm -hmm. what they want to do is that okay she has been to the show five years ago ten years ago they want to get all the old data mm -hmm. move it, give it to the edi editors and they can select interesting clips from the previous shows just to, uh, to show it uh, when she comes around or it can also happen that there is a cancellation and there is a new person coming along another famous person and you have to move that data very very quickly so that mm -hmm. editors and that's where this technology yeah. also uh, yeah. comes along that okay you're sitting all right this new person is coming along it works at the data center speed rather than up to now the way they were doing it was that from one storage copy to the workstation then copy to the other storage here you're just in the data center from storage to storage and very very fast uh, mm -hmm. movement yeah. well and i think it's, it's changing i mean if, if you take a, a football show um you know, at half time, you know, they're, they're kind of shooting it live. At half time, you know, let's say there's a player, yeah. you know, had a good good first half, and they want to show some clips from the previous, you know, some previous games. That, but they didn't know before the show began that yeah, this was going to happen, right? Yeah. So, so all of a sudden now they need to be able to find that data a lot quicker. Uh, and, and be able to bring it back and queue it up and the editors are kind of beavering away getting this stuff ready to play during the half time show so having intelligence on the data is really important as well so um, you know if you have all your clips and they've been tagged with this was the game of you know Manchester United versus Manchester City and you know that clip would also you might even list all the different players and you know any special things that happened so that they can just do a quick search they can pull it back so mm -hmm. so having having the ability to get that information that data at the fingertips very quickly mm -hmm. is i think also very much one of the benefits of having you know object storage right. and, and and storage made easy as well i think i, I noticed that that, that that the exact thing that you you're talking about now i think i'm one of the one of the sponsors of our national team uh, actually has a has a commercial yeah. and I, I i wondered because after the first half they always always have a commercial and sometimes there there are images of that first half in the commercial already right yeah. right so i thought oh, how was that possible how how, <laughs> how quickly how quickly yeah. did they work yeah. right uh, with, and then that, i mean they've got to work i mean the, the you know the the um the live shoots uh i mean mm. it, it's incredible what yeah. what they've um got to do so actually i have a guy who works in my team that um, worked on the super bowl live shows you know so you know and what he would tell me about what yeah. what goes on you know behind the scenes and and you know they're shifting like whole IT yeah. infrastructure teams yeah. and, and going sort of building that on, on spec but yeah I mean they've just got to be so ready because you never know what, what the analysis is going to need so all the that background footage is incredibly important and I think the current one that's easier if you want to get a clip 10 years ago that's the harder bit yeah. yeah, because uh, then because it yeah, hasn't been uh, indexed, yeah. correctly, uh, indexed right? yeah. yeah, and uh, uh, one thing that for the GDPR uh, solution, like the discovery phase, yeah. uh, the solution it indexes the data, so we index and auto classify yeah. the documents that okay, this one contains emails, this one contains credit cards, and we label them. Yeah. We are also working on with uh, Amazon and Google to auto classify the media data also. Mm -hmm. That's work in progress where we will be the transcripts, audios and all that. And I would imagine, given these examples, um, it's also much nicer to work with from, a, from an end user perspective as well, right? We, we touched on the user-centric approach earlier. Is this primarily a, a, a user or workspace driven uh, solution, would you say? Or is it more, or could you also imagine it being a, a, a sea level driven uh, uh, solution i mean obviously there are cost things uh, the, the, the cost the cost of the solution obviously is also something that needs to be addressed and that's something that sea level usually does but nowadays you see lots of changes in 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 the market being forced between quotation marks by the by the business itself right because they want they need more. They want more. So eventually, sea level is going to say, "Well, you make a good, you make a good case." So we're going to do this. So the amount of data that people are storing, like it's already, I mean, I, I, what I've mentioned it well, three or four times. I'm slightly getting boring on this, but but you know, it, the, the, it's it's the relevant topic today. Nobody wants to delete 
any data at all unless they have to by, by compliance or regulation. So, so there's a cost associated with that. You know, to store petabytes, exabytes of data, it, it costs a lot of money. Like I said, you know, there's, you know, the vast majority of, of expenditure in the data center is, is for storage. So, you know, at the sea level, what are we spending our money on? Mm -hmm. Is there a way that we can actually make that data work for us? Can we get insights into that data, you know, whether it's our customer base or whether it's some product development or industry trends or, or, or what, whatever? I mean, there's, there's an, you know, analysis has been getting done on data for a long, long time, but this is opening up. What we're actually talking about is being able to do, if you've got a database and you've stored all that data, that's always, that's what people have done Mm -hmm. since IT. Yeah. We're now talking about the unstructured data. So I'll give you an example. Let's say somebody uploads um, a photograph, okay, a JPEG image. You know, there's no way you can go and search that JPEG image. I mean, you know, what, what do you search on? There's no words, to, no context to search on. And if it, someone's just uploaded it and they haven't, you know, with object storage, you can tag the data. You can say, this is a picture of, yeah, you, you know, data, right? right? Yeah. yeah. Now, that is time consuming. You can build a workflow when you say to a user, when you upload an image, please add you know, this, this extra information that describes what that, what that image is. That's great, yeah, we can do that. But then some people get lazy or maybe the, the process is broken down. So what we're seeing at the moment is bringing in AI technology, so image recognition technology. The image has been uploaded, it gets run through the AI scanner and, the, and it might say, you know, there's a guy um, with a helmet riding a mountain bike up a mountain, it's a beautiful day, mm -hmm. um, and then it'll tag that image to say that there's a mountain yeah. bike, you know, mountain biker, you know, all, all the different things. And that's kind of now put some value onto that data. So if I, you know, then have, you know, a million different images, and I want to find all the images of a mountain biker, now I can run a search on the metadata and I can actually get that data back and I can actually then go and do something you know, useful with that data. Whereas before it was just sitting there sure. consuming storage, you know, consuming power as those disk drives spin. So, so, you, so you can actually maybe go from having data as a burden to having data as, as a, a, added, added value. A, 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 added value and this technology we are working on is that Images and videos also. Like, all right, sh give me the show where it's Madonna and she mm -hmm. talks about the perfume. Mm -hmm. so, because you can now do that. Mm -hmm. Take the video, mm -hmm. get the transcripts also, mm -hmm. attach it to the video. And now you have a much, much more powerful tool to find the images, uh, or find the videos mm -hmm. that you need to do or relevant uh, videos also. So adding the metadata, uh, adding in using AI to auto classify it, build the model, uh, label it, push it to uh, Cloudian mm -hmm. so they can do the search there also and also so other tools can use it and also do it with so and, and it reinforce each other as well yes. I would say right yes. so you're searching and you're searching reinforce each other to Correct. come up with a, with, a, with a better end result a better end yeah. result yes. Yeah. Yeah. About the, the the Cloudian feature, that really the features that really um, uh, that are really beneficial when it comes to the solution, or when it comes to GDPR and, and, and compliance, compliance and all that stuff. Um, obviously, you, you, you've you've touched on it uh, uh, a couple of times already about the S three S three yeah the S three API that that, yeah. that that you use. Uh, what does that do when it comes to GDPR? So, I mean, S3 API, you know, how, how it differs from traditional way of accessing storage. If you use block storage or file storage, there's basically three different commands. You know, you write data, you read data, or you modify data. Mm -hmm. And that is it. That's mm -hmm. all, all the protocols like NFS, SMB, you know, block fiber channel, iSCSI. That's all, you know, that's what the SCSI protocol is doing on top. What the S3 API is, it's, you know, it's not a protocol, it's a you know, pro programmable interface, as the yeah. name implies. Yeah. Um, but there's 450, be beyond 450 different verbs as part of that stack. So not only can you read, write, modify data, but you can also add in things like reporting, 
um, you know, uh, alerting, Enriching management, the yeah, the whole metadata tagging around your, your data. And there's some interesting, you know, new features. So, so I, you know, it's AWS, Amazon Web Services, they, they develop the API, but they make it open source so that organizations like, you know, us and Storage Major Easy can use it. And it's in their interest that the more people that use it, the, the wider the ecosystem comes and obviously, obviously it, yeah. You know, to, you know, it's a good benefit for them. So we, we actually decided to to go down the S3 API route when we when we built you know started to build the product. We could have done our own API. We could have used you know the, the, there are others out there like Swift that came from the OpenStack mm -hmm. community, CDMI, which was a SNEA, you know, storage yeah. networking industry association. They kind of you know brought that out. But S3 really beca has become the the de facto standard for cloud and object storage. Right. So kind of object storage being like that cloud storage that everybody's using, you know, Google and Amazon and Microsoft and, you know, all of the Spotify's and the Apple's and, you know, these big sort of, you know, mega providers really. So the S3 gives you a great deal of flexibility and really what it's doing is it's moving the, the management of data out of your storage platform up to your application. Mm -hmm. So the application and the user now has a lot more capability, a lot more um, power over what to do and how to look at and how to manage their data. So, so, so it enables a, a much more software defined approach. Ab ab absolutely, yeah. absolutely. That's, that's yeah. And, so some of the interesting, so you know, we, you know, so so Amazon, they they will they will release, you know, a new version of the API, and there'll be you know, some new features in there. We obviously have, there's a little bit of development effort for us to then get that new features out. Um, so we never say that we are 100% compliant with what Amazon have done, you, you know, because we we're always a little we're always running a little bit behind, but we, you know, we're, we're pretty pretty compliant. I mean, we're up in the in the 90% compliance which you know in my, my opinion is way beyond what anybody else is doing mm -hmm. but some of the, the nice things and I think really help not just with GDPR but across you know uh, managing your your data I, I keep going to say dataverse and I hate that phrase <laughs> but you know the dataverse or shoot me um, <laughs> things like S3 notification mm -hmm. that is a really powerful capability because what that, that gives you is it's almost like a, like a messaging queue so an application or a user has written you know, a data object into to, to Cloudium via the S3 API, but now there's somebody else wants to know that that's happened or another process or another application, mm -hmm. that that's there now mm -hmm. and they want to do something to that data. So the S3 notification is a way that once it's been written, it goes into this message queue and it goes to the next actor in the, in the, in the system to say, right, that data is there now, so they can do whatever they need to do on the data. When it's finished, they can say, yeah, we've done that now. And then there might be another, and, and especially in media, for example, you can have 20 different actors you know, as you go through the process of modifying your, your media. So it's also a way to automate processes. Ab right? Absolutely. Yeah, so, so, and where, where Amazon, you know, they also extended it to use the concept of serverless computing, where they just have these little processes that they don't need to have running all the time because it's just consuming, you know, compute power uh, and it's costing, you know, the user money. So this whole concept of service compute, you know, Lambda is the technology that Amazon use. It basically turns it on, does its thing, turns yeah. it off again. And that is all integrated into the, the, you know, this S3 notification piece. So then we can, you know, not only automate, but we can start to control how we manage our all our yeah. processes. And probably given a GDPR compliance uh, issue, uh, 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 you also, you also can, can, can pr provide approved adequacy with, 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 with GDPR, even with those very small functions uh, uh, like Lambda. Uh, uh, yeah. Correct. Yeah. And uh, like we, we are a good consumer for uh, the S3 notifications. Uh, one thing is that we don't store data in a proprietary format. Mm -hmm. So we are storing it in Cloudian. Mm -hmm. There are other processes that are writing so we want to be the gateway, but there will be a lot of cases where people go, just go directly to Cloudia or, else on that or, data, or, or, data or write the data there. Yeah. Now we leech on that S3 notifications. We know about the data and we can run our uh, discovery processes mm -hmm. and find out that, okay, does it contain sensitive yeah. data or not? And also the user can see them. 
rather than going in and doing a full scan for, to find the data, you just get notified that something so it has changed. Up the well, it, 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 spe yeah. it, it, it speeds it up and also makes it more real time. And then, and then the, the other one, I, I, you know, I think is worth mentioning is so there's another um, verb called S3 Select, um, which uh, basically allows you to run SQL queries on unstructured data. So. Okay. One of my team kind of really badly termed it as, um, you know, it's, 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 it's structured for unstructured. Yeah. Right, yeah. yeah. So because that's I felt like slapping him when he said that. Because that's what yeah. you associate it <laughs> with, right? You associate that with structured, structured data. data. Absolutely. Yeah. So, you know, that, that's what you would tend to use, you know, with your SQL Server, your Oracle type databases, your LTP databases. Yeah. Unstructured data is just a mass of files. I mean, it could be anything in there. But yeah, being able to run SQL queries now, and then you can start to say, well, if it's this and that and this and that, and does it contain this? And, and you can build some very you know, complicated um, search techniques. Yeah. So that's now really where we're going from, you know, we're a storage platform, but we have this programmable capability with, with S3 mm -hmm. that we can do some, mm -hmm. some really, really clever stuff with, with our data now. So like I say, we are turning the unstructured data into structured data. Um, which then, you know, and that's really then where it brings the intelligence and it brings the value to the, to the data you've got. So if you've got 10 petabytes and you're paying money, you know, to store all of that data, yeah. use it, you know, let, let's get some value out of it rather than just keeping it for the right. sake of it. But as an organization, I mean, I think we've been talking about the benefits of, of, of deploying uh, the combination of, of, of SME and uh, Cloudian. Uh, for GDPR compliance, but also for additional um, interesting uh, use cases. But as an organization, what what do I need to take into account when I want to start using it? What 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 is the impact on on, on choosing this particular uh, solution for my for my for my infrastructure, for example, or for my organization as a whole? How, how, how do you see that? So we do try to make the solution as easy as possible to deploy. Mm -hmm. We do not want to send a consultant army there. Mm -hmm. uh, it is that someone has got Cloudian, they've done the deployment. Uh, again, it's not a big deal, it's not like the, the days of the year where you had a six month or, or a year mm -hmm. deployment plan. Mm -hmm. uh, we provide the software as uh, virtual software. Mm -hmm. Uh, you have hypervisors, we support all of them, you just do the deployment. Mm -hmm. Then we don't want you to change all your processes there. We are going to be one in all solution. Mm -hmm. We connect to them and then we provide the same ways that the user were accessing plus more. Like if they were accessing the data using the drive, we provide a drive. Mm -hmm. uh, and no, but now you have the advantage also uh, that we talked about previously about the GDPR discovery mm -hmm. and all that. But now you can access the same data in your mobile devices. No change required. Mm -hmm. You can access it in the web browser. You can share it externally in a secure uh, way. Yeah. You can integrate it with your existing identity management system. Mm -hmm. That's the way we look at it that make yeah, you should be a good citizen yeah. in the IT world or in the mm -hmm. uh, deployment world mm -hmm. where it's easier to deploy. Yeah. And normally it takes two or three days to do the deployment yeah. and then you do need to train the, uh, the administration yeah. staff. So, so if you, for, I mean, it's, it's probably quite hard to, uh, to put your finger on, but if you have to give a quote in the sense that how, how long does it take for an average organization to, to deploy the solution that you're I would qualify it with just one thing. If the organization knows what they want to do or what they need, uh, then it will take Not always the case. Uh, three days. Uh, because the solution is quite wide, it provides a lot of functionality. And if you are focused that, okay, these are, I just want to do the I want to share it externally, I just want to do home directory replacement, I just want to do discovery and integrate with this identity management system. Yeah. It takes less than a week okay. for us. Yeah. But if the user says that, oh, I want this feature also, I want to enable this feature without understanding mm -hmm. the proper workflow, yeah. then we, tr we do try to guide <coughs> the customer that start focused yeah. and then expand. Yeah. 
And then from 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 a from a hardware perspective, uh, if we if you if we if we, if we call Cloudy and the, the hardware apart. Yeah, we, we, I mean we, we're software defined <laughs> right, as well, yeah, right? But software. yeah, yeah. Yeah, I mean ultimately we're managing the data where the data yeah. ends up living, right? Yeah. Um, so so what we generally find is we are either going into work with organisations that have a completely new application, you know, that data set hasn't existed before. Or we're going in. We, we do actually a lot of backup target, you know. So mm -hmm. people have been using other, you know, traditional storage platforms or or, or tape, um, and now you know they're kind of getting to the point where I'm going to have to buy something extra, and they kind of want to make it the last purchase, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. You know, rather than keep on introducing new technology. So something like backup is quite easy, because all you do is now you point the backup. You know, from where you were originally sending the data, you can just send it to the new new mm -hmm. new target, mm -hmm. and then we can just start to take all that stuff, and all the old stuff will just expire out over time naturally, yeah. as as you know that, that goes side by side for a while, and yeah. then after and that old stuff will. And of course, if you want to sort of you know accelerate that, obviously you can make some, you can use the backup software to to make a copy and get it all on 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 um, the object store platform, yeah. and, and what we find is that we typically you know, talk to organisations about a single use case, so backup target is a great one because that impacts everybody, but then it soon turns into, well, what else can we use this for? So, you know, doing the, the, the file collaboration or the file sync and share, you know, that's just another use case. You know, we can do, you know, media store. We have a customer that has a satellite and he's, and he's beamed down 10 petabytes in, in about a year mm -hmm. and all it all we are we're just collecting you know lots yeah. and lots of images that are coming down off the satellite I mean 10 petabytes you know we, we throw terms like petabytes exabytes around far too easily I mean 10 petabytes is a huge amount of data yeah. think about trying to copy 10 petabytes how long that would take I mean you, you know, you, you, you have months probably. It would take you months to do that yeah. because then that becomes a problem for data migration. Every time you go through another storage platform, you know, reiteration or a storage platform refresh, you've, you've got to migrate the data from one to the next to the next. And it's getting to the point where the data is so large now that actually you can't really migrate the data or you've got to think entirely different mm -hmm. ways. Mm -hmm. And I think this is where we see Public cloud, you know, is, is extremely popular these days. I think we are seeing that people are pulling a little bit back from public cloud, especially when they've got huge data sets, because if you've got 10 petabytes in the public cloud yes. and you've got to pay to read that back. Yeah. And but now yeah. you think, well, okay, now I'm just I'm just locked into this vendor because right. I don't want to pay the money to get it out. It's going to take me months to get it out. W w what am I going to do? Yeah. And I think now organisations are having to think again. What it, what is you know my strategy moving forward? And also this. GDPR or those legislations that you can't put all the data in the cloud no. for regulatory no. reasons. So uh, they will use Cloudian no. for on-prem in their own data center. Yeah. Uh, so uh, up until now, we've kind of assumed that everybody was going to uh, to use the the complete solution, right? So storage made easy combined with Cloudian, but. And probably the reality is that there are quite quite a number of companies that still have made other storage choices as well in the mm -hmm. in the in the past, right? Um, how how does storage made easy integrate with with those? So, right? uh, we integrate with S three. We have about sixty different connectors, mm -hmm. so we integrate with S three. We integrate with the cloud vendors, uh, Amazon, Google, yeah. Azure, uh, existing filers. We also integrate, if there is nothing else, FTP, web dev, yeah. we talk at the top and also at the bottom, we can integrate with those uh, systems. Yeah. So we are, the core is an integration product and no matter what data you have, we, we yeah. mostly are able to talk to that. Otherwise, we can develop a connector for that. Yeah, and we have a framework yeah. that can do it very, very but, quickly. But are, are, you also, are you also, let's say, invested in, in S3 as a, as, a, as a preferred target for, for, for what you're doing? So are you, are, you, are, you, are you trying to convince customers to move towards, uh, towards yes. an object? Yes, uh, object and S3, that is the de facto standard mm -hmm. uh, for uh, object storages uh, on-prem or uh, in the cloud. Yeah. Yes, there are variations, 
but S3, yeah. that is the most uh, popular. And the second one we find is existing filers, yeah. uh, where rather than just doing a shared drive, they want to enhance that, enhance the access, multi-device access and control over that. Yeah. In an ideal world, uh, would all uh, would all unstructured data be on on object? Uh, how how do you see the, the the division between? Because object storage isn't isn't the best solution for all types of data, right? So 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 the, you you need to be able to, to continue to support. If values. you are running databases mm -hmm. uh, where you need block storage, mm -hmm. then uh, it's different. But uh, I don't think the filers they are going to stay and S3 or the object storage gradually mm -hmm. it is taking more it's and more data uh, 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 yes yeah. so the, the growth that yeah. is there and uh, like you touched on the point that okay if 10 petabytes that a small amount of data how do you back it up yeah yeah uh, well, an object storage is built in i, I think the, you know the you know the traditional filer uh, platform does get used for lots of different use cases so it would be used as application storage, you know, yeah. storage for Oracle databases, you know, running virtual mm -hmm. machines. Mm -hmm. that, that workload is usually categorized by small block, you know, so 4K, 8K, you know, even up to 64K transactions and lots of transactions. So, yeah. you know, we measure it in IOPS, you know. Yeah. Um, that's not suitable for object store. Potentially, you know, we can start to leverage the use of, you know, solid state, storage, you know, NVMe, NVMe fabrics, and yes. something that, you know, we are looking at, mm -hmm. uh, investigating, you know, where does it add value? Because you've always got to look at, we don't want to go and compete with these big flash array vendors that that's what they do and they do it very well. But they're actually only targeting 10% of the, mm -hmm. I'm going to say it again, dataverse, right? Yeah, 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 there you go. And 80% uh, is unstructured data. Yeah. yeah. And it is growing. Yeah. Very, so, very fast. So we've got to be very careful with our customers to say this is what it's good for and this is what it's not good for. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I, I'm, I'm always talking about having a multi-tiered storage strategy, go flash for, you know, the high performance, high IOPS stuff. Yeah. And for the bulk of your data where cost per gigabyte is more important than cost per IOP, yeah. that's where object storage plays very well. Um, I mean, the other thing with object storage that, you know, I kind of haven't mentioned is the, the, the fact that we can expand a cluster across multiple data centers. I mean, I have a customer that's got a single cluster spanning 15 different data centers. Okay, cool. So you can lose, more, you know, you can lose, I mean, depending on how you build it out in terms of what protection policy you mm -hmm. have, but you could have, you know, multiple data center failures and it just seamlessly redirects the client to where there's still a copy of the data. So not only do we talk about scalability and just in terms of you know, petabytes, exabytes, we're talking about you know, multiple data centers as, as well, and actually multiple users. I mean, yeah. we have a customer that's got, I think it's, um, it's over three million users um, on, the, on, the same, on the same platform, which, you know, I mean, it's... And, and also uh, for fast access also, that you have it across different geolocations. Yeah, so the, the data is local. Uh, the data is local the, also. Yeah. User, yeah. And that's built in yeah. uh, into the object yeah. storage and we, we take full benefit of that. So I mean, when it comes to, to, to automated processes like like uh, like auditing and discovery, you already talked mm -hmm. about that. How can this, I mean, this can be integrated. I mean, maybe this even provides these things, especially when, you, when you're talking about monitoring, uh, searching across multiple, uh, multiple workloads, you know, all these things. But what is your role in, in, in that respect? I mean, obviously, like we talked about before, you, you, you support it, but could you elaborate a bit more on that? So we provide auditing mm -hmm. and that's for, we had it before GDPR mm -hmm. and when GDPR came across that, okay, you need to know that who accessed the data when or and the history of it. Mm -hmm. So we provide, we audit everything when someone access or performs any operation yeah. on that. And everything we do, we do it via an API. Mm -hmm. We are API first. Mm -hmm. So it's open. Mm -hmm. But we also provide it as a stream also. Mm -hmm. And because it's available as a stream, someone can integrate it with an inter uh, intrusion detection system. So if someone is downloading a bulk or doing some operations, they can see the patterns and they can find out if there is any attack mm -hmm. uh, there. Mm -hmm. 
that's on the auditing side and then on the notification side that like uh, Neil already mentioned that we will be integrating with so you know at, at the storage level you know we're, we're doing auditing we're doing um, you know logging access all of that kind of stuff um, but I think the storage made easy piece goes that next level up to the end user the business business need uh, you know so we can kind of we can provide that you know for all the different workloads that get put into the the, the cloud and object platform um, but I think where you need that extra level is when you're dealing with you know this 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 type of data that the so sort of well, easy well, work so, with. Well, we so would you would you would you would you think it's fair to say that that your uh, Claudian's part in this is is, is is for IT just to just to cut some corners here it's for IT and your your part of it is for the user for the end user uh, uh, and the user and for legal like uh, we will record that Kamran accessed the document at this time mm -hmm. from this IP address using this mm -hmm. uh, device or he uploaded it or he browsed the directory uh, so it is much yeah. uh, and it is integrating with the yeah. identity the, management system. The extra piece that. I think is the fact that you might have put an alert on that file that yes. you know let me know who accesses yes. this yes. file because yes. it's yes. sensitive. Yes. We really don't have that level of awareness that's not really the role that we're playing in this that's that's the value that you know the yeah. storage made easy platform comes in. And when it comes to integration, obviously, uh, uh, disaster recovery and backups are also something that is, I mean, th th they're important for most organizations as well, even though, obviously, object storage in general is way too big to, uh, yes. <laughs> to back up. Uh, 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 well, let, let's have another data center for, for so, my, for so my this data is, device. So yeah. this is where, you know, object storage gets put is that once the data goes in there, because it's an active archive, it's self-healing, self-regulating, it can have, you know, you can have multiple copies, multiple copies in multiple data centers, the idea is that, y you know, you can't back this up, let's just make it as solid as possible. So you then start to look at, well, what is, you know, is that good enough for most organizations? So you look at what an organization's current policies are, well, they probably do some sort of backup, they might keep it in two places, and then you factor in, okay, well, it protects you against a physical failure, you know, it might be a, just a simple hard drive, or a server, or a data center, or it could be that somebody's, you know, like kind of a software, an accidental deletion, or it could be a virus, or malware, or, you know, um, there's a ransomware. ransomware, that's the one where yeah. they try to encrypt it. Yeah. So we, we, I mean, we have the, something called versioning, um, you know, built in, and that just means that any time anybody tries to modify an existing object, it just creates a new one. Mm -hmm. It doesn't modify mm -hmm. the old one, mm -hmm. that's kept. So now you've got multiple versions. So if any, you know, so you've actually got multiple versions of, of, of the data in a logical sense, but you've got multiple copies of it in a, a physical of, sense. A bit of analogous to a certain extent to blockchain and where, where you can still see what, who did what, when, yeah. right? Yes. So, so yeah. this is basically the Well, and, and, and a blo blockchain is something we're investigating. Can, can it deliver value in our platform? So, you know, our, our CTO is, um, you know, a PhD in AI, very, very smart guy, he knows this stuff way more than I do, and, you know, and he's trying to work out, you know, does this add value into what we do, or actually is it more for your traditional, you know, yeah. databases? So, so um, like uh, Neil mentioned on the versioning, we take advantage of that versioning. Now, RENS, we call a feature called Forever File. Mm -hmm. What that means is that object storages, they provide that full versioning not removing the objects, we can keep track of that. Mm -hmm. Now, someone's, there is a legal hold. Someone goes and says that, okay, what did this structure or directory or user's home directory looked two months ago? Mm -hmm. Because we have all the access patterns, we know we can time it back and say that, okay, that's how it looked like. And you can also prove it for legal hold also, or you want to, someone, there is a ransomware attack, you want to revert it back to the previous good version. Again, mm -hmm. you can move back in time and just uh, revert it uh, back. Mm -hmm. So, again, the features provided, the fundamental features provided by Cloudian, and we utilize it mm -hmm. for uh, the business side. Yeah. Uh, blockchain, I'm not sure. <laughs> <laughs> we did do, we do have, and we think that for us the use case is on the audit that 
we stream it, put it into the blockchain so it can be proven mm -hmm. that, okay, it has not been changed. Mm -hmm. There are other ways also to do it, but blockchain, that's yeah. more a hype thing right now. Well, yeah, yeah I, think, I think it's like, like anything that comes out, it's yeah. where do you, you know, yeah. some really cool technology, yeah. um, sure it will add value, yeah. and organizations are going to work out yeah. where that... And obviously there is no yeah. one, one blockchain yeah. technology, right? No. There no. are multiple. Yeah. Yeah. It's not all about Bitcoin, right? So yeah. no. Uh, no, 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 no. But, 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 but more for uh, <laughs> reputability. Yeah. Reputi Reputability? What's the word? <laughs> You're asking me to say that word? Uh, yeah, no. I have trouble saying R's. Too many R's in that all right. word. Yeah, so, uh, <laughs> but for that, and uh, <laughs> well, uh, the, uh, the idea we got for that was that uh, there was an article that some chap, they would still archive the documents, mm -hmm. and then every week they will take MD5 for all the documents and publish as an ad in right. New York Times. And that was their stamp <laughs> that it has not been changed. Right. So uh, yeah. that's the way we yeah. plan to use yeah. it. So and, and, and just to, 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 to finish off the part about the integrations when it comes to security, right? Mm -hmm. uh, you, you, you provide notifications, I would, I would, I would suggest to, to the applications that you also use as a company, because I mean, obviously you need to be to play, to play nice so with, uh, with, with all the uh, Actors involved? Uh, uh, yes, so we use uh, the notifications for that. And also security, it is much more than that. Uh, Cloudian, they provide client side encryption, mm -hmm. SSEC. Mm -hmm. We utilize that, server side and client side. Uh, then we provide end to end encryption. Then if someone wants to use encryption at rest on top of that, we also provide FIPS 140 uh, encryption. So uh, the, the important thing is that like scale, security are also all the components, they have to play the part mm -hmm. and they all have to work together to provide that. Yeah, yeah, I mean, encryption is a difficult one because, uh, you know, where, where, what are you trying to protect? You talk about data at rest encryption, yes. that's, uh, you know, we have that, we've got multiple ways that you can implement that, but that protects you only really from somebody stealing your hard drives. And if somebody can walk into your data center and steal the hard drives, you, I think you've got bigger security issues than that, right? Yeah, so. that, that is correct. Uh, but w what we also see is that, yes, for, but if you are going to the cloud, then we provide another level on top of that, yeah. where we also encrypt the data. So if you are going to Amazon or Google, now the keys, yeah. they are in your enterprise file fabric. Yeah. Now someone hacks that, yes, the keys are gone, otherwise the government comes to Amazon, they can't read the data. Yeah. Okay, um, I think we've covered quite a lot of ground in these, uh, in, in, in about an hour, I think, uh, mm. we've been uh, we've talking to each other. Um, just just to, to, to wrap things up, the goal is to provide an end-to-end -end solution when mm -hmm. it comes to uh, 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 using object storage and managing object storage. And then with the added bonus, when it comes to, uh, to, to what SME does, of also being able to, to, to add more uh, to that than only the support for object storage. And for, for, from, from, from uh, Cloudian's pr perspective, also to add more um, uh, than just GDPR compliance. <laughs> I think, is, is, that a fair, is that a fair summary of, uh, of the things that we discussed? Anything to add? Yeah, I mean, we, you know, we were selling object storage before yeah, sure. GDPR yeah. was, was, was getting talked about, but, you know, when, when I first heard somebody, you know, do, doing a lecture on, you know, GDPR coming along, um, I just thought, wow, wow, we actually have a technology that, mm -hmm. that, that is going to be so valuable and relevant to this discussion. But it's not just about, I think, I think with us, if somebody is, is you know, buying our solution to address their GDPR requirements. I mean, ab absolutely, it makes perfect sense. But I think, the, the, you know, there's also an appreciation that they're getting more than just a GDPR. Yeah. And I don't want to say a GDPR compliance solution because that doesn't exist, as we've no. already said. Yeah. Yeah. But, you know, they're getting more than that. And it's, you know, really driving down the cost of, cost of storage. It's giving them that scalability mm -hmm. uh, and, you know, all this other nice stuff that you get with the S3 API. Yeah. And, and many more. I mean, you know, I, I can talk for, for yeah, days, yeah, yeah. for days on this. So, so I'll, I'll, I'll. Uh, we don't have, we don't we have, have days. <laughs> yeah. And, and then for, for, and for you. Uh, uh, for us, we mostly had the, the features, the security features that were required for the GDPR. We did have to add a few more. Yeah. Uh, for uh, on the consent side, a few 
user registering and uh, all that kind of stuff but it is yes it is a solution that helps you yeah. in your gdpr compliance yeah. uh, but it is more yeah. it's a scalable solution yeah. uh, with object storage it's a cheaper solution uh, compared to your filers you get search across all your different uh, storages, multi-device access, anywhere access, mm -hmm. uh, and you can also implement your policies. Yeah. All right. Well, uh, thank you very much for uh, taking the time to uh, talk to me about this. <laughs> thank and, you. And, uh, well, looking forward to, uh, to our next discussion on this.